Hello there, I'm very happy to see you here and today we're going to be talking about one technique that really really helped me not take things personally and this is GW number two. Now again, if you don't know what a GW is, then you can go to the introductory video for what is GW and you can find it in the description. Now let's get started uh, and uh, again if you would like to skip to the either summary section or the most important points here then please find them all around me or in the description box below. And today the technique that I'm gonna give you it's not gonna be enough for you just to watch this video uh, of course it's gonna be required for you to put in some effort too. So it's the same as watching for example 50 videos on how to ride a bike and not uh, sitting on a bike and uh, pedaling yourself. Uh, well, that's not gonna work, right? Now this interesting technique is gonna be all about VRs or virt virtual reality uh, set. The main question here is what kind of VR set are you wearing? So notice that I asked you what kind of VR but not whether you are having it or not because most people I would say 99.99999% uh, have this VR. And I'm going to explain you what it is. So basically one day I came to this conclusion that uh, most people are having, they're not seeing reality, they're seeing something else that they are creating because I had moments when I would do something but the person would understand completely something else and then they would um, even make me feel guilty for the fact that I did something that they thought that I did but I didn't do it. I did something that uh, they created a story of me being the bad guy and then they're uh, guilting me into this. They're uh, blaming me for being that bad guy when I wasn't this person uh, in the beginning. And actually a lot of stories like this and I didn't understand why is that even possible? How, how come people don't see what is actually happening? And then I thought maybe I'm also not seeing what's happening. Hmm. Everybody is basically having a VR set on them, a uh, thing that does not allow them to see reality, including me, so I'm not an exception. And uh, they, uh, uh, these uh, VR sets are changing the picture that uh, the person is thinking that this is reality so much that is actually unrecognizable. If you take a look, if you take it off and then see the reality versus when you see it with the uh, VR set, then the difference is night and day. And this VR set is not only like technological, right? But is also biological. It's like so deep inside of us that it controls even our emotions, our interpretations, our actions. And so I thought, what kind of elements would that VR include? And I thought uh, it usually starts with experiences. Yeah, so people have experiences after which uh, values and beliefs are implanted in them and then they start to see a world in a different way, in a completely different way. Now experiences can be very significant even though for the adult for example it does not seem significant but for the child before they are seven years old, before they're able to critically uh, analyze the information that is being fed to them, before that they're not able to understand what is happening and the only thing that they can do is just accept it. Yeah, because their conscious mind is not developed well enough, but their subconscious mind is just yeah, soaking it in. And now values, they are very important because they are basically the GPS navigation system, uh, which I talked in one of my previous videos. And uh, it's uh, basically something that allows you to like or not like something. So there's a big chance that if you like or don't like something that could have been implanted in you without you even realizing, without you choosing to have it, yeah? So maybe you like the same thing that your family member is like and you, do you think this is a coincidence? No, that was actually implanted in you. It's not, uh, there's a big chance that it was not your choice. It, it was just your subconscious mind soaking it in and then of course you're gonna feel like yeah, that's actually, I, I want to do this. Yeah, sure, I, I'm choosing to do this. But actually, most likely, it has been uh, determined for you. Now, next thing is beliefs. Why beliefs? Uh, because they include a lot of things. 
uh, they control our interpretations yeah and with interpretations come different emotions you can say well this you can see the same thing in two different ways and uh, two different interpretations are gonna generate completely uh, different emotions for you yeah and then these emotions are gonna inspire you to uh, take action yeah and that will create results and throughout our life we can have hundreds and possibly thousands of beliefs and these beliefs are very deep inside of our mind we don't we usually don't know that they exist but we feel it uh, we feel it inside and we confuse this feeling inside uh, as us yeah but actually it's just a belief it's just a program in our mind that we can just decide to eliminate and work towards eliminating it so that so that we change how you feel inside so that you are a different person now and many of these beliefs i mean the majority of them come from your family yeah uh, a big number of them come come from your environment from your friends from culture from media from teachers as well and a fair amount of them are based on trauma so they are not productive the the ones from trauma they are the ones leading towards even more trauma now i believe this metaphor is going to be uh, allowing you to not take things as seriously and as personally from other people that might even insult you even insult insult you consciously okay now let's get started so imagine uh, there are people that have a specific vr set and this VR set is a, uh, like a magic one, yeah? So um, every single time when they put it on, they are able to see people. Well, I mean, they're looking at people. However, they see monkeys, yeah? So they don't see a person at all. They see a hairy, goofy, loud monkey. <laughs> and every single time that person says something, what they see, the people with the VR, yeah? I mean what what they hear they don't hear english they don't hear words or they don't hear any other language that you speak to them what they hear is ooh, 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 yeah or whatever uh, monkeys uh, do and not only that every single time i mean when you walk yeah they don't see you walking on your uh, feet yeah they f for some reason their um vr set distorts it and makes it look like it, as if you are walking on all fours okay and now of course these people are laughing because they're not seeing you they're seeing a funny animal right which is not you like you understand that it's not you but they see you as if you're that animal right and when they are laughing are you taking this as personally probably not right because they are not seeing you they're seeing the image of you they're seeing a perception of you they're seeing fiction they're seeing something that is not there something artificial something created by their device but not but reality is not this device so there, therefore you're not taking it personally so as long as these people have this device on they're gonna think that you're stupid they, they, they're gonna think that you're not able to even speak English or yeah they don't even know how you look like okay they don't know anything about you and now imagine two people that are having their own devices yeah and one person with one device sees people as uh, i don't know mini pandas for example and the other one with uh, his device sees people as penguins right and now they're fighting who is more right and uh, one is completely convinced that uh, people are penguins and the other one that is mini pundits and they fight and they give like very big uh, lists of why uh, why people are this and not that and it's very funny for the other person the, the person that is out of this uh, virtual reality mode so to speak because they see that they're never I mean nobody's gonna win even if they're winning they're still uh, they're still losers because they don't see the reality yeah and the funny thing is that these two people are convinced that they themselves don't have a VR but the other person yeah yeah he has it or, or she has it yeah and it's funny that uh, if we uh, exchange these VRs yeah if we take it off uh, from their heads and then uh, just switch it then uh, it's gonna switch completely I mean one person is gonna see 
uh, it as uh, penguins when in the past it was mini pandas and the opposite is true as well and nothing is going to be able and nobody's going to be able actually to convince them that this is not true because they're going to feel it inside and you know what people uh, people trust what they feel and that's dangerous sometimes because you don't know if what you feel is something that you decided to want to feel or not because this mechanism that uh, tells you what to feel is right and what to feel is wrong uh, maybe it was implanted by somebody else uh, somebody else way before you were able to choose this mechanism and so then you understand that for example if the person uh, that has this VR yeah and he does not like uh, monkeys and he's gonna be yelling at you because he thinks that you're a monkey yeah you're not gonna be taking it personally and you're not gonna feel uh, offended you're not gonna feel offended because that's not true and it's not about you it's about the, uh, his or her experience of you his or her perception of you but that's not the truth so they cannot see you as long as they have this device they just uh, are seeing something else not only that if you take their uh, helmets off then you guys are gonna be friends and <laughs> they he or she is gonna be uh, apologizing to you for being so distorted for being so blind actually and believing in this device and not thinking that this device is fake yeah not questioning the validity of it however first of all what you need to do is to know that they are having this vr in real life they are having this vr right however you are not seeing it you think that they see reality but they don't see reality if you look from another point of view then you're gonna see that that their view is very distorted and it has nothing sometimes nothing to do with reality and it has everything to do with them and nothing to do with you and i'm gonna give you some examples to demonstrate that and so let me give you five examples to demonstrate it so the first one is when the person becomes uh really cold to you like give you gives you a cold shoulder when he or she finds out that you are you had an award for example uh, at your job and they didn't and they don't like it they're getting jealous and then they start to ignore you to not talk to you the way they did uh, before this award because they believe that they deserve it deserve it actually more than you did but for some reason you got it even though objectively you worked more and you actually uh, earned it they still think that that they deserve it so the experience here might be that uh, this person might have had a dysfunctional family which made them feel insecure every single time when they're not number one they thought that being number one is going to give them this security and this sense of adequacy this sense of I belong here and I can be considered human because before that if I'm number two then I'm pre-human or not enough yeah so they're trying to always be enough 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 and this is a compensatory uh, mechanism so the value here is definitely number one being number one or being the winner yeah so that means that uh, this person is going to get threatened by every single one that is trying to get uh, this uh, number one position and uh, uh, you know there are two ways uh, in order to make sure that you are number one is to actually become number one yeah just work uh, more than others for example or try to bring everybody down so that it looks like you're better so that it looks like you're number one now that you um, brought them down or for example if this is a boss and she's never going to be satisfied with her employee that does better than her she's gonna get jealous and she's always gonna be like okay this is not enough this is not enough this is not enough. always super picky the belief here might be uh, well everybody is out to get me or everybody is out to beat me to to win me to compete with me and then to win me yeah so I should always fight fight for my right to be uh, number one yeah another belief might be I am better I am just better by default I am better than you I'm better than everybody else and I just deserve more than other people and nobody has the right to take this from me because I'm better 
So now the question is, uh, what are you? Like, what is this image of this person that has this VR set uh, on them? That she, for example, sees you as what? Yeah? Uh, what kind of monkey that she sees you as? Yeah? And this is uh, a threat. So she sees you as a threat. As a person that is <laughs> trying to get her. Yeah? Trying to win her. Yeah? When actually you didn't think about this. You were just doing your job and then you, uh, you've you earned your place, your second place, uh, your first place, sorry. However, she thinks that you've done it for her, specifically for her. Well, yeah, that's usually what narcissistic people do. They think about themselves. So that's also a form of distortion, of distortion of their VR set, yeah? So what this lady is going to be trying to do is to eliminate you, eliminate this threat because this threat makes her uncomfortable. Even though that this thread does not exist, but it exists in her reality, in her virtual reality. And this virtual reality is very, very powerful that it creates actually a, a response, a bodily response, an emotion inside of her or a set of emotions. And the fact that reality is completely something else, it makes no difference because this person really believes that her reality, her virtual reality is the reality. So now you hopefully understand that she does not attack you, she attacks the image of you, this evil person that she actually created in her mind, in her VR. Just like the person with the set does not yell at the other person, but at the monkey, at this perceived image of uh, him of, or her. Or for example, there is a friend that is always criticizing you for really, really small things. So what is the experience? The experience is that, for example, she as a child was being, uh, was yelled at for many times for no reason. Yeah, for no uh, objective reason. And then she got this insecurity inside of her. But then she noticed that, uh, you know what, when she's perfect, when she's striving for perfection, then she gets chastised a little bit less. So she thought, okay, let me decrease the chances of being uh, attacked, like verbally attacked by my family members by being uh, perfect. So now uh, it became a synonym. Perfection became a synonym of uh, safety. Yeah. So what does that mean? So perfection, safety, imperfection, unsafety. Yeah. So now she is afraid of imperfection. So every single time when she um, sees anything that is not perfect, including with her friends, then she's gonna be telling them what to do, telling them what to change in themselves in order for her to feel safe. She does not feel uh, safe with imperfect people. And she's trying to demand, uh, demand it from their friends, but also from the world, okay? And also from herself, first of all, from herself, actually. And so the value here is perfection and security. And the belief could be, for example, everybody has to change according to my standards in order to um, serve me and create a peaceful mind uh, for me. And the image, the image that her VR created of you in this case, yeah, you, her friend, her imperfect friend, is you are a threat to her peace of mind. And that's why she uh, is telling you how to change, how to behave, how to even think, how to feel in order to make her feel safe. And so in the past, if this was something important to you and you would have taken it personally, then now understand that this is just a distortion. Yeah, she's not even seeing you. She's just seeing something, somebody else, somebody that's trying to uh, make her feel unsafe. Yeah, like a threat. But you're not doing this. You're just being human. And what are, who are humans? Imperfect creatures by default, right? And then when she's expecting you to not be imperfect or be perfect, then she's actually expecting you to not be human anymore. So does that sound like a, it's a good idea to take it personally? I don't think so. Now, example three might be, for example, there are people that have um, uh, family members or just in general, their family atmosphere is uh, quite aggressive and the way they talk is quite offensive for uh, most people. Uh, well, people that are not uh, from their uh, environment. Yeah. 
So they are basically a harsh family with harsh words, harsh vocabulary and harsh body language, which is not everyone's cup of tea, of course. So maybe in your family, the atmosphere was very calm, peaceful and relaxed. Yeah. And now, so that means that the difference between your family and that family that I uh, uh, talked about is very big. Yeah. And the bigger the difference, the, the, the harsher it feels. The harsher it feels when you interact with them, when you have contact with them. And their value, for example, might be to belong in this family. And when you belong in this family, that when you want to belong in this family, that means that you want to think like your family members, to speak like your family members, to feel like your family members, right? And the belief here might be that, you know what, this is the norm. Even though other people don't like it, well, I like it and my family likes it. So this is the norm, okay? And so in their VR, they're gonna just simply think that everything is okay. Yeah, I spoke to that person in that harsh way that I speak uh, in my family, yeah? But this person is okay with that. This is what their VR is uh, telling, when actually in truth, in reality, uh, the other person might feel offended. And if you're that offended person, then you can understand that it's basically not even about you. It's just about him. It's about his or her VR. And now the fourth example is going to be between a person who's very punctual and the other one who's way too flexible for the other uh, punctual person. It's like, for example, people from Spain. And I don't have anything against uh, people from Spain or other cultures that uh, are having similar relationship to time. But uh, I know that, for example, if you are putting a time like, for example, at nine, uh, you want to start uh, the party then if you have uh, people from Spain or other uh, similar cultures, then they're going to come at like, I don't know, 9.30 at least, or 10, 10, 30, maybe even 11. Yeah. And that's okay. That's, that's completely fine. Or not even show up, right? Whereas the other person from another country, some, some, something more punctual, like Germany, for example, they would come most likely exactly at the specific time that you ask them to come, which is nine in this case. So the experience here for this person is the fact that he or she was born in Spain and that's the norm there. That's okay. Yeah. And the belief here might be that, um, well, time is flexible. Uh, spontaneity is a good thing. Yeah. And the belief might be that, uh, come on, let's relax. Who, who cares? We don't need to be so specifically like strictly on time all the time. Yeah. So the VR image of the people from Spain is that everybody is okay with that. Yeah, that's what they're thinking. But in reality, not everybody is okay with that, at least uh, before they know that this is actually the culture in Spain. So if they come later and you're thinking that, oh, okay, they are disrespecting my time. Well, no, they're actually not disrespecting your time. That's just the norm in their country. That's it. And the last example is a little bit more metaphysical for people that believe in past lives, uh, like me. And uh, imagine that there is a person who was, for example, a soldier. Yeah, at least eight lifetimes before that. So, of course, as you can imagine, he became uh, accustomed to this type of energy, this type of environment, atmosphere, right? So, he's going to be a little bit uh, like harsher, blunt, more direct than... Uh, maybe the majority of people, yeah? And what he can do is actually judge people that are more emotional because he's not gonna understand where, where, where they come from, yeah? Because he was, he got used to this type of um, punching energy for such a long time and he's not even able to understand emotions. What are emo what's What's the point of having emotions? All you have is just a target and you just go there and achieve it, that's it. Yeah, no, nothing more. Life is simple, right? It's all about achieving. No, it's, it's not like this. So this person might even judge people and say that they are weak because of this, yeah? So, oh, look at them. They are just wimps, yeah? They're, oh, look, they're, they're so emotional, yeah? But it's a habit. They're, they're just saying this because they got used to the opposite energy of an emotional person, uh, of an emotional person. And their value, maybe their unconscious value is comfort. And 
their belief. Their belief is that everybody, well, maybe it's an unconscious belief, that everybody else should act so that it makes me feel comfortable, so that it fits my um, view of the world. Because when it fits my view of the world, then I feel comfortable. And so if this person is going to tell other people that they are wimps for crying, then this very, very, very likely is not true because he is biased. He's just been in a completely different place where, emo where you don't need emotions. In fact, you need to, um, to forget about emotions in this environment. In that type of environment, you need to repress your emotions. You need to forget about them. You need to just to put them somewhere in the closet in order to become a successful warrior. Okay, so these were the examples. And now remember, the most important thing is that people that insult, they are insecure. People that are secure do not feel the need to insult somebody else in order to make themselves feel better or in order to change them somehow, to control something, some parameters from them, because uh, you know what, they don't fit my image of the world. But you know what, people that are confident, they are not doing this. They're not trying to control other people. Insecure people feel secure only when it's all according to their plan. But their plan is distorted. Their plan sometimes has very little to do with reality. And by their plan, I mean how you should think, how you should talk, how you should behave, how you should wear clothes, for example, or how you should live life in general in order to fit them. And now finally, the action plan, which is really important because just uh, listening to this video or just watching this video is not going to be very um, useful if you're not going to be uh, using it in your life. So it's a skill. It's not just something you see once, uh, once in your lifetime and now you know it for the rest of your life. No, it's a skill. You need to develop it. So a good way to develop it is to imagine yourself going back in time to the time when you felt, um, well, disgusted at somebody, yeah, or uh, when you felt offended or when you took, took it personally, yeah, where, where somebody, for example, consciously insulted you. Yeah, in that case, just please go there. And I know that this is not comfortable for you, for me as well, for nobody. I don't think anybody is going to feel uh, comfortable doing this. But if you really want to let it go, then I'd suggest you go there and actually work it out. And how do you do this? So you are uh, having these three big elements. And by the way, this is not the, the whole list of all the elements of this VR. Maybe there are way more than this, right? But I know that these three work very well uh, if you are trying to like analyze. So what is the experience that this person had? Yeah. What is the what are the values of this person? Values or just one value? And what are the beliefs of this person? And then think for yourself, or similarly to the way that I've done here with these five examples, and I'm 100% sure that you're going to be, uh, you're going to find uh, a way very fast to let it go. And then you will realize that it's not you, that he was not seeing you, the real person right now, uh, looking at this video, yeah, watching this video, I mean. But he, he was seeing just a, a projection of the mind. Yeah, it's just a d distortion. Just imagine there are like different elements, Zzz, just changing the color, changing the texture, changing the, uh, the way you look. Yeah, and then creating a monkey just right in front of uh, his face. And then he believes that this is reality, that this VR is uh, the reality when it's not. Yeah, but then it's really, really important for you to remember that, that this person actually had a VR when he or she was insulting you. Yeah, I really believe that people that insult do have to have a VR on them. Because when we take it off, I really believe that we're going to be like the best friends. Yeah, everybody around us. Because we're, we're going to understand how our ego is actually controlling us how our ego is actually manipulating our perceptions of what we think we are and what we think other people are. And that creates a whole big set, big set of problems. 
And so you can do it like every single day for like 10, 15 minutes for a couple of weeks. Yeah, until you feel that this uh, is a habit and you now know exactly how to work it out. But if you feel that this is too much, then you can do it for a week, for example, and then see if you're going to be remembering it because we need to put it in your unconscious mind so that you know how to do this when the you know what hits the fan. Yeah. Another thing you can do is just remember these uh, words. Yeah. Uh, experience, values and beliefs and just write down like E, uh, V, B. Um, and then just have it right in front of you because it's very simple and so that you know just in case uh, something happens then you can analyze it very quickly and then let go of this uh, this uh, feeling this feeling of get of being offended and taking it personally yeah now hopefully this GW is gonna be useful for you I know it's very useful for me and I'm using it sometimes uh, well not so often now but in the beginning it was more often and I remember it was just letting go of all of these negativity very fast, yeah? Sometimes less than, what, 20 seconds? So yeah, please use it, train yourself and become good at it so that you are able to do this automatically and uh, yeah, good luck with everything. And this is it. Thank you, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or maybe suggestions, then please leave me a comment down below. Yeah, here is the summary and see you in the next video. Bye bye.